Volcanoes are some of the most awe-inspiring natural phenomena out there, with fountains of lava and clouds of smoke coming out of openings that are about as close as Earth can get to literal hell. These things have set the stage for some of the biggest disasters in recorded history, perhaps the most infamous being the Pompeii disaster in AD 79. But what if I told you there was a type of volcano that is so powerful that it could alter the climate on a global scale? This is what is known as a supervolcano. Now, before we get into the natural version of nuclear winter, I would appreciate you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Okay, so what exactly is a supervolcano? Well, a supervolcano is essentially a normal volcano, but bigger. These behemoths tend to form in very similar ways to normal volcanoes, which is either through plate tectonics or the existence of a hotspot. Volcanoes formed from plate tectonics are more common, as plate tectonics are generally what cause mountain ranges to form in the first place. Normal mountains generally become a volcano when magma deep underneath Earth's surface is able to get much closer to the surface in one way or another, and when it's able to break through the crust, an eruption happens. Most notable volcanoes are formed through plate tectonics, with Mount St. Helens, Mount Fuji, and Krakatoa all being connected through the Pacific Ring of Fire, which forms the boundary of the Pacific tectonic plate. Hotspot volcanoes are a little different, as instead of through plate tectonics, they are hypothesized to form through gigantic plumes of magma that extend all the way to the core mantle boundary, about 2,000 miles or 3,200 kilometers below Earth's surface. Hawaii is the most notable example of a hotspot, as this reservoir of magma has led to almost constant activity in the region's volcanoes that has in some cases lasted for millions of years. The reason why Hawaii is a chain of islands and not one gigantic mountain stretching all the way to space is because tectonic plates move over hotspots. So once tectonic movement takes a volcano off the hotspot, it becomes inactive. Now, these formation processes are in place regardless of how big the volcano is. So what makes a supervolcano different? Well, supervolcanoes are defined as being volcanoes that have in the past put out an eruption with at least 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of material. To give an idea of how huge that scale is, imagine a cube that is half as long and about three times as wide as Manhattan and taller than Mount Everest, and that cube is made in, out entirely out of lava or ash. That's how big a super eruption is. Eruptions of this magnitude tend to happen when magma is building up underneath Earth's crust for tens or even hundreds of thousands of years, and the process accumulates into extremely huge amounts, and then that magma all of a sudden breaks through. Such eruptions are given an 8 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, which aims to rank volcanic eruptions based on how much material the, volcanic produce, the volcano produces. So, with all of that out of the way, why do supervolcanoes have such a massive effect on the global climate? To illustrate this, let's look at what would happen if Yellowstone, one of the most notable supervolcanoes to exist thanks to its national park status and a general location in the middle of the United States. Somewhat surprisingly, lava flows would not be the worst part of the eruption, as they generally can't go terribly far before cooling down and solidifying. What would make a Yellowstone super eruption so devastating is the sheer amount of ash that would get ejected into the atmosphere. This ash would spread out across pretty much the entire country, and even a small amount of asphalt would cause some serious damage. The closest major cities to Yellowstone, Denver and Salt Lake City, would get buried under several inches of ash, which would be enough to completely decimate crops and cause potentially fatal respiratory problems. But it gets even worse the closer you head to Ground Zero. You know how occasionally when there's a huge snowstorm, like on the order of many feet or meters, things like trees and power lines can collapse? Well, ash is much, much heavier than your typical snowfall, so if the same amount of ash accumulates, which will happen in much of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, it could be so heavy that entire buildings could come crashing down. Even far away from Yellowstone, like on the East Coast, small amounts of ash could wreak havoc on crops and transportation, the amount of ash in the atmosphere would likely shut down air travel across North America similar to how a much weaker eruption in Iceland in 2010 crippled air travel in Europe for a week. Only, here the impacts could last for months or even longer. In fact, the eruption will inject an incredible amount of ash into Earth's upper atmosphere, which would eventually cover the entire planet, essentially acting as a thin layer that blocks some sunlight from reaching the surface. This would cause a global winter that would last for years or possibly even decades, 
which could throw the entirety of Earth's ecosystem out of whack and make farming near impossible out of, outside of controlled greenhouses or bunkers. This would likely kill millions of people, and that's uh, excluding the massive economic and geopolitical consequences it would create. Now, it sounds like an extremely scary scenario, but how often do these kinds of eruptions happen, and what happened when they erupted in the past? Well, the good news is, these eruptions happen very, very rarely, generally once about once every 100,000 years or so. In Yellowstone's case specifically, the last time it erupted in such a catastrophic manner was 640,000 years ago, and some scientists have said there may not be enough magma underneath Yellowstone for it to ever produce such an eruption again. The most recent major eruption was the Toba supervolcano that blew its top about 74,000 years ago which changed the global climate so drastically that some scientists believe it nearly wiped out the human race. While this was the most re recent eruption to attain an 8 on the aforementioned VEI scale, I would be remiss to make a video on major volcanic eruptions without mentioning the Tambora eruption of 1815, which was just short of a true super eruption clocking in at a 7 on the scale. And the reason this eruption was so significant is because it is believed to have directly caused 1816's year without a summer, which caused, among other things, heavy June snowfall in the U.S. Northeast and frost in August in Europe. As you can probably expect, this caused massive agricultural damage and famine across much of the globe, and in the case of India, the unusual weather pattern helped foster a cholera outbreak that wound up killing millions. Such eruptions are a little more common than true super eruptions, happening every thousand years or so, but they are still rare enough that the chances of this kind of eruption happening within our lifetimes is relatively low. Overall, super volcanoes, especially Yellowstone, get a lot of press in the media because of their destructive nature and global consequences that they do go off, but these kinds of eruptions are so rare that you really shouldn't need to worry about them. And that's all I have to say about super volcanoes. As always, I appreciate you like the video, subscribe to your channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Thanks and have a great day.